Hi everyone, I'm Lucas Polidoro. I'm a program manager in the Microsoft Identity Platform. And today we are talking about all the capabilities that we added for uh, querying directory objects with Microsoft Graph. So this is the agenda for today. We introduce what are these advanced query capabilities, and uh, then we deep dive a little bit under the hood. I hope you don't mind. And we'll talk about some query examples so you, you know how to practically use these new capabilities. And also, we will talk about the SDK support for this. So let's start with what are these query capabilities? They are additional functionalities that we added to the most common directory objects and their links. We indexed basically additional properties to this uh, directory object that you see in the list. And uh, we added new way to filters and use order by and use count and filter uh, on top of those. All the ones that you see in the list are the currently ones supported, but that doesn't mean that we will not add uh, more of them in the future uh, if, if you give us feedback for. So just to set the discussion, you mind com coming off mute and saying if you have any experience, just to, to see if you if you are familiar with this, you, you have some app in production, isn't that? Don't be shy. Like uh, myself, Bumi, uh, option A. Option A, perfect, perfect. So uh, more, more, uh, one or more application in, in production, cool. Uh, anybody else uh, having an application in production? Can, can you actually ra raise your hands? Is the reaction to, to see how many of you have apps in production? Cool, I see, see some hands. Perfect, awesome, thank you very much. And okay, we can use the raise hand function for, for this. And who instead uh, never used this Microsoft graph for, for, for directory objects? Okay, so I see some, some other hands. That's okay, uh, we, are, we are here to learn. All right, so then let's do a quick start on, on how to use these capabilities. So I guess you, you know what Graph Explorer oh, is. Uh, Graph Explorer, is a tool that we offer for uh, querying Microsoft Graph, and it's available on web website. Here, there you go. So this is Graph Explorer, and uh, uh, you can add your uh, test URL with, with Microsoft Graph for here. Uh, you can add headers, et cetera, et cetera. And, and this is, uh, one of the uh, basic queries that you can send is counting the number of users in your tenant. I'm using a daemon tenant, and if we run this query, we get uh, the response over here. So in this case, I have just 40 users in this tenant. Going back to our presentation, the important thing to use these advanced query capabilities is to have uh, count equal true uh, query string and consistency level equal eventual uh, header. And I'll tell you why in, in a second. This is a, a, the sample query uh, that I, I just showed you. Okay, now, now let's see what actually happened under the hood. Here is how a call gets from Microsoft Graph all down to our directory store. So we have Microsoft Graph uh, that we all know and love. And when it receives a request for a, an identity workload, so a request to users or groups or devices, object, it would call internally our uh, service that manage uh, the directory object called the REST directory service that we ultimately execute the read-write operation to the AID store that, as you can imagine, the highly available, highly resistant store has replicas all around the world. Now, this is a pretty simple architecture, like front-end service layer 
and, and backhand, backhand store. But what, what's the problem with this? The problem is that the directory store that you see over here is very, very old. It was uh, ideated and, and invented even before Azure was, was even a thing. So by default, this store doesn't support even counting. So if you want to know how many users you have in your tenant and your organization with just this query store, you, you, you couldn't get that, that information. So what we did is, as the fundamental theorem of software engineering say, that all problem in computer science can be solved by another level of interaction. And this is exactly what we did. We uh, created another layer to, to get data from the directory store called Advanced Query Service that is able to get this data from another kind of store that is very performant and a use uh, you know, graph query based index and very, very, very advanced sorting and, and filtering capabilities that the original store couldn't, couldn't satisfy. And we are pushing the data into the store thanks to another service that does a sync of uh, all the changes that are happening in the original store to this new store. Okay. Um, moreover, as this uh, sync engine is very good at sending change notifications, we're using the same sync engine to feed the data into the Microsoft Graph change notification to give you the uh, opportunity to subscribe to changes that are happening in the directory. But this is an, another tool that, that, we, that we offer. So now let's talk about eventual consistency. So by show of hands, how many of you know what eventual consistency is and how it, it might work in AD? So Azure Active Directory is a highly available and resilient system offering, of course, high performance thanks to distributed servers all around the world. And these servers are maintaining a copy of the data in different partitions, and this is what we call it. And due uh, to the CAF theorem, this implies the needs of eventual consistency. So what, ex what exactly it, it is? How does it work? Let's say I have my client application and uh, on one end and on the other end, I have all the replicas. So these uh, multiple servers of the directory. When I read in the eventual consistency model, it means that I may land in a random replica. So I read here, I, I land in replica number one, I, I execute another read, and I land in another replica. But keep in mind, all of these are kept in sync. So as long as I do just reads, nothing really happens. It, it's fine because all the data is, is copied all over. Uh, the problem happens when I'm writing. So in the version consistency model, when I write into a replica, it may happen that the next up read lands in a different replica that was not yet synced because you know, with the same timing and synchronization, I may read in something that is not as up to date as I, I wrote uh, immediately before. And now you'll say, but hey, look at this is not what happened with Microsoft Graph. I can write and read and all it's fine. Well, yes, you're right, because this is not the default model that AAD uses. We use something called session consistency. And session consistency is basically a, a smart way to lock an um, uh, application plus tenant and geographical location pair into a, a specific replica so that when you're reading and writing from the same application on the same tenant, you land in the same replica all the time. And that means that it gives you the impression of, of having read-write consistency. 
even if uh, uh, you know an, another application reading the same data may land in a different replica. But this, this is why when you use Microsoft Graph and you read and write the data, you, you get a sense of consistency. But now, you remember that uh, at the beginning, I said that for this advanced query, you need some magic parameter like the dollar count and consistency level potential. So why, why do we need that? Uh, let's get back to, to our architecture over here. So when the user execute a call to the identity workload, both the REST directory service, that is the normal service, and the advanced query service can answer the question because both of them can, can sh return the list of users right, uh, independently. Uh, so Microsoft Graph doesn't know what to do here. Well, the super easy thing is to say, hey, if my query contains a dollar count or my query contains a dollar search that are not supported by the original store, then, okay, go, go to the advanced query service. But what happens if I, if I write something? Uh, when I write something, again, uh, same process as, as described before, the write gets redirected to one of the replica, and then the replica are getting in sync all together. Uh, the sync engine then picks up the change from one of the replicas that may not be the one that the uh, original write was written into. And the sync engine does their own, their own calculation and finally push the change to the advanced query store. And you notice now that the, the data in the advanced query store and the data in the original replicas are in completely separate places that they, they don't have really any correlation between each other. And so all this time of replication plus all the time for the sync engine to, to push the change here is something that we want you to account for, you as a developer to account for. And so we decided that to agree with advanced capabilities, you also need to add this eventual consistency header because uh, we want you to be aware that the data that you will be querying from this store may not be as up to date to the original data that is over here. And you know the, the differences are, are not like hours or, or days. The difference of, of uh, synchronization are in the order of about five minutes, let's say on average. So that may happen so that add the user to the list and then if I use a, a, a search or dollar search or dollar count using this, I can get the response that I expect only like a few minutes later. Okay. So how would you handle this in, in your app? Well, there are three scenarios. One, if you do only read that 92% of apps of apps are doing, then you have don't have any problem because your app doesn't actually write anything in, in the directory. So if you're only reading, you, you can even send eventual consistency header in all the requests and, and get a little bit of improvement in latency. But if your app then writes and requires user interaction, you can show some appropriate messaging like, hey, this separation might take a while when, when you add the user to, um, or for example, use local, local cache. Well, if your application instead is a, like an aut automation app, we know that it's not ideal solution like implementing an exponential back off to, to continue querying back and, and see, for example, you, the user that you just added, it's returned, but we have, we have something common that will fix that. Unfortunately, not very soon. It will be next year, first part of next year. But uh, that, as you can imagine, might require a, a lot of architecture changes. And we are working actively working on it to, to get your developer experience better. So next up, we have QuerySum. 
Okay, now I'm going back and forth with Graph Explorer. Uh, so you can you can see how to query your tenant data and what the results you get back. So the first one we we already saw the raw count of the users, and this is the supply. So the raw count is just returning a number. While for the second example, instead of using a raw count, we use count as a query parameter instead of query segment, and also we add a filter. In this case, when we do this, we get the list of the users plus an OData count value over here. So you, you have both in, in the response that, that can be very useful. Going back, another functionality that, that we added is counting, for example, the transitive member of a group. It, as you know, a group can contain also a nested group. And with, with transitive members, you, you can count, for example, all the like leaf nodes of, of this group. And in this case, this group over here has 27 transitive members. And if we remove this transitive node name, we only want the direct member, so that number would reduce to six. Now, another big functionality that we added is search. So I know that many of you were asking for contains. So how, how do I search, for example, users in my, in my directory that uh, has display name and they want only to search for example, for the second part of, uh, of my display name and not the first part, not, not using start suite, I want only the, the second part. Well, it turns out that the exact contains operator is super expensive for you know, querying the database. And, and also, it may not give you exactly what you want. And the approach that we took is to uh, separate all the words inside the display name and description properties, tokenize all these words and let you search for all these tokens. So for example, for we are separating by space, we are separating by different casing, we're separating by special character and if there are numbers and letters together. So all of these are the tokens that are generated. Uh, in this case, and we are going to do a start with on each of the tokens. So let, let's say an example, if we run this query, so let's search for all user with display name Al and, and mail start with, with admin, we get this result. So you can see here that Al, okay, so this was a bad example, sorry about that. But let's do WI instead. I. If I search for this, I, I re I'm returning this part because this was separated by a space and I got the starts with on the second token. There is a lot of documentation regarding search. And if you if you open our web page uh, with, with the docs, you, you can see that there, there is a lot of explanation on how to use here, how to use these capabilities. So, next up, we have still uh, a little bit of search. Let's see what other example we have. Search is enabled again on display name and description. Uh, when you do an or inside the search and you select a property that is not display number or, or description we fall back to the normal starts with and and that's why sorry going, going back here over here sorry okay uh, that's why we we say mail starting with admin because even though we are inside search mail is not supported as a, this tokenization approach so it, it fall back with, with the start with. Okay, here, this is every service principle with display name sync. 
you can see that this is found, right? Even if it, because it, it, there is an uppercase difference, this is found because it, it was tokenized with the, um, the space. And, and this is also found that it was tokenized with a uh, special character that is a dot. I just wanted to interject here. I think, I think this is great. One thing I'll just note is I was very confused when I started to use the search functions and mm -hmm. found that certain object types are limited to the operator supported and further specific properties of that object type. So if you go back to that page you were showing, sure. I think it's, a, it's a good page that shows the high level functionality oh. of the search capabilities. Yes. But no, the web page, sorry, the one that you broke out. Oh, the web page. That, uh, this one over here. Yeah, so this is good at like showing the high level. Actually, this might be a newer page than the one I'm referring yes. to. Yes. There's one that talks about OData search capabilities. Mm -hmm. Anyway, there was a table nested in a completely different page that shows the limitations of various object types and properties. And oh, yeah, yeah. It took me a while mean to figure that these, out. This page over here. Yeah, 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 that's the one. Okay, so, so, so this is specifically for filter, though, not, not for filter, sorry, search. Okay. Yes, yes. Right, right. Okay. Filtering, yeah. Mm -hmm. Is that related to what you're discussing or are you just, you're just yes, focusing on search yes. for this? Yes, These are okay. exactly the advanced query capabilities that I'm talking about. And yes, I, I, unfortunately, we have these uh, differences for each of the properties. It just drove me a little nuts because I didn't know about this up front. Like I was looking mm -hmm. at the main page. So there is a link to this page off the main page I'm talking about, but mm -hmm. it's kind of buried. And so if you're trying to do this, you might bang your head against the wall trying to figure out why it's not working. And then when you find this, it, yeah. it makes sense, but it's mm -hmm. a little bit buried. It's tough to, once you I, find I know. it, it's, it's good. You know, you get it, but it's mm -hmm. not as intuitive sometimes. But anyway, that, that was my only Yeah, it, it's, all, it's all because of uh, the initial architecture, right? So if, you, if we go back here, remember, the indexes are in this, so in this query store. And that's why we, we need to have these advanced, advanced query capabilities because they are not in, in the same one. And if, if you see here, the one with the empty check mark, it works by default, means that it, it used REST directory service. The one with the field check mark, it, it's, it's using this service, got it? That, that's uh, why it's, uh, that is, there is so much differences. But again, we are working on is it unifying everything. And so you don't have to, to lose your head on understanding what kind of parameters you need to put for, for which property. And, and we, we are fixing that. So yeah, it, it's the good news. I can say now. So let's go back. We're here. Okay. Okay. So next up, we have search transitively. This is uh, very interesting because transitive search is, is something that you can limit to a specific type of object. As you know, a groups can contain users, can contain service principal, can contain devices, can contain other groups. And thanks to this name that is called OData cast, you can uh, filter down the list of members by just users and then use you know a, a search on those on those users and find the one that you that you need. Right, so we also added, uh, this is just a recent thing, the supports for ends with on the proxy address collection. And this allows you to, to do a query like uh, search every user have in the collection of proxy addresses, that is uh, a, a list of strings, basically, uh, or any of the items in this list that ends with like this string. And if I run the query, I get all the users with the proxy address ending with this string. 
so you, you can use the advanced query parameters also with the any clause. And another thing, uh, we also added to, with advanced query parameters the not uh, function. So you can negate anything you, you need. So if you if you want to, to search all the users that are not ending with on Microsoft.com, you just add a not here before, run the query, and you get everybody with empty proxy addresses or proxy addresses that are different from, from the search search string. Again, all of these requires this uh, count equal true and consistency level. If I forget this one, I remove it, and I run the query, I get an error. So, oh, this is not supported, but it's not true. It's, it's supported. You just forgot to add uh, the consistency level eventually. And I know uh, this message is super unhelpful. We are also uh, working towards getting more helpful messages like, hey, you, you might need to try to add consistency level eventually, see if it works. Okay, order by. So this was another limitation of uh, uh, the original directory store. You cannot get ordering and filtering at the same time. Well, now we can order filter at the same time. Always remember to add count equal true, even if you don't need it, because that's it's how uh, Microsoft Graph knows that we need to use the advanced query service instead of the normal service. And in this case, I am searching for my user order by created date time and that have an office location starting with the, the number 20. And then I'm just getting the top, top three. This is the result. These are the top last three users that are in building 20. Okay. So batch is another example where developer struggle a little bit. Batch is a post operation, right? So as a post operation, adding request header here for eventual consistency doesn't make any sense because I am posting stuff, while the request headers needs to be in the actual post body. Okay, so it's in this here. So uh, you can see that the header needs to be in, in the uh, actual request of the body and not in the post request. So if you run this query, now we have that the request number one has this result and the request number two has this other result. Almost done. Now let's talk about SDK portion. PowerShell is very well supported because everything that you see in Microsoft Graph is automatically translated into this PowerShell SDK. And you can install this using these few commands, you can install Microsoft Graph model, and then you import the authentication. For example, if we want to send a request for users, we import the user model. And then this one, it will show you all the models that are available, optional. And after we connect to Graph, we can send to this commandlet the consistency level eventual that I was shown before, and the count, uh, this would get in, into a variable, and then we can use the other, the advanced query parameter. So let's see how it works in practice. Okay, so you get MG users, blah, 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 potential, and I have, oh, I need to, Connect graph. Perfect. And, and this again, and there you go. Uh, you'll see every user with name that has room in with the, even one of the tokens. Okay. 
And now if as I use a user count as as variable, I do add user count, oops, uh, so dollar user count, dollar user count, I'll see that I have six in this variable. Good. So PowerShell is in a good place. Uh, some of the command lets actually do not have the consistency level eventual parameter, but this is just a bug. If you if you encounter some of them that you cannot add the consistency level, please let us know and, and we'll fix it right away. Well, the .NET SDK is a little tricky because it doesn't support out of the box some of the parameters. And I created this sample application that is published in this GitHub over here. So I created this .NET application and you can see how to use all the various parameters in, if you go to the graph data service. So for example, if you need to, to get the applications and you, you want to use search, then you need to use this syntax. Basically, you, you add into the request parameters the um, query option count equal true, and then the query option search. As search is not exposed as one of the normal select and filter. So if, if I try to do dot search, it, it doesn't exist, unfortunately. The, this application mimics Graph Explorer, more or less. So when you run this, we'll see that is a very familiar UI with, with the various Graph Explorer co commands. So just a second, seems a bit slow building this. Very simple app though. Okay, so sign in with my account over here. Application done, perfect. And here you go. Okay, so I can set, set my dollar select here. I can add the filter. You know, I can do display name, column room as, as we did before. And if we click load, now, uh, not filter, sorry, search. Oh. Now it, it would filter, so search all the users with, with this uh, token in the display. Okay. So you can play with it. I think it, it will be very useful if you're using .NET as, as an SDK. And we'll give you a good, good reference. Going back to our presentation, we're almost done. Okay, so conclusion is that all the things that I showed you, unfortunately, are not supported in the current B2C tenants. We are, however, we are working on something called CM tenants uh, that have similar capabilities to the B2C tenants and will support all the capabilities that I showed you before and many others. Then, as, as I was telling you before, search is only supported to just display name and description. And if you try to do it on any other property, it would default to start suite. We would really like the feedback from you if you need the tokenization uh, approach on any other property that then display name and description. Also, ends with filter is limited to these three properties. And again, these are just a property name. They are independent of the object. So any object with properties that have this uh, name would, would work with ends with filter. Also, another limitation with, that we, we currently have is that if you are using the advanced query capabilities, you cannot expand. We are also fixing that. Uh, that will come a little sooner, in like one or two quarters. And we don't support skip. So if you have a pagination of items, so a collection that, that 
is over 1999, that is the maximum limit, you have to use skip token to paginate through the various pages and you cannot do like skip in like the, the other capability query will support. And just to recreate, it only supports eventual consistency for now. Here are the additional uh, resources that I was mentioning you before. We have a help page for, for these specific uh, queries and um, the example of uh, the .NET application. And ask for, from you if you're using these, please fill this survey if you feel that uh, you are missing some functionality. I'm personally reading all the answers to this survey and, and putting that in our backlog uh, when, when we, we receive enough feedback. Oh, that your code of the survey. Okay, to, this concludes our session. I hope you learned something new and you enjoyed the internals of Active Directory. If you have any other question, I'm here for the next 10 minutes. Hi, everybody. If, if you have a question, please feel free to come off mute. And uh, just in an orderly fashion, we'll try and go and get through those. Yes, I've got a couple of them that I've just kind of written down as, as you went. Um, because of the eventual consistency issue, you suggested uh, uh, applying an exponential back off. Is there anything returned in the response that indicates that when I write a value and then immediately request it, that the response I receive might not be the most up to date value? It, that, you know, suggesting that I need to do an exponential yeah, backoff? Yeah, that's the, the work we are currently implementing. And it's not available right now. It, it would be um, something called consistency token, where, for example, if you receive a notification from like a, a change, and then you, you, get this you get this consistency token that allows you to, to understand if the response is in a replica that, that is as up to date as your, uh, the notification that you receive. And we are also thinking on, on implementing this consistency token for any write. But unfortunately, it's not available right now. So yes, it's not ideal because if, for example, you add and remove a user one after, uh, and you do this operation one after the other, and then you query back your, your list of users with, with the ID, and then you receive a 404, you don't know if uh, like this 404 is is actually true, or mm -hmm. you know, or it, it was due because the delete was not happened yet, right? Yeah. So, uh, uh, you, you had said that there's like a five minutes wait until it's uh, consistent on your side. Is that something we that's somewhat guaranteed or? No, it's not. So <laughs> the uh, replication delay. It's really susceptible by kind of writes that are happening in the replicas. So as you can imagine, in, in one replica, there are many tenants. And one of the tenants, if they, for example, delete 100,000 objects at the same time, they may impact also other tenants in the same replicas that are trying to replicate the same change all over the other replicas. And Depending on the type of writes that are happening, the geo where the replica is, network latencies, and, and so on, the replication delay can, can vary a lot. And we currently don't have an upper bound. Sure. Okay. No, that so, was fair. Those yeah, tokens will help a lot yeah, with that. What we can tell you is that on average, like let's say P99, so not average, P99, it will be within five minutes. Okay. Uh, going back to some of the more recent slides, mm -hmm. there was an indication that we could specify the consistency headers ourselves. And I guess I saw that you had said on the, the new version that's coming out, the only option for consistency is eventual. On at least the old version, is there any reason why we wouldn't favor something better than eventual? Um, you know, given the choice? So the choice is the default 
like not specifying the header, that is session consistency. Mm -hmm. And if you specify eventual consistency, but we, we, again, with session consistency, you only land into the, the normal service, so the, the REST directory mm -hmm. service over here. So you, you cannot use the advanced query capabilities if you gotcha. use gotcha. Um, session consistency. If, so by switching you, to eventual, I'm, I, I open up the door to being able to use the exactly. stuff. Uh, exactly. I gotcha. And, and you, you always need to remember to add count equal true into the query because eventual consistency is also handled by the REST directory service. So just the eventual consistency alone does not guarantee you to, to land over here. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you need both eventual consistency and count equal true. Okay. Uh, and then finally, uh, I guess on the, the PowerShell SDK, mm -hmm. are there any plans to make the, the Microsoft Graft uh, PowerShell SDK itself available inside of the ARM deployment script environments? So that you know it doesn't have to be installed just because you know we, we deploy a lot of ARM templates. Mm -hmm. and I, I can see you know value in being able to query the graph as parts of those deployments, but you can't install anything from those environments. So it'd be really cool if uh, that were just available by default in there. I can connect you with our PM for the PowerShell SDK. So that'd be great. Send me an email and let me just edit the slide and then. And did the, in my email. This is my email. Oh, sorry, um, not directly related to uh, this, but do we have any sort of a threshold or idea for things like um, I mean, some of the exceptions like bandwidth limit being exceeded or too many requests? I remember from the documentation, this is sorry if, if this is in the context of a multi-tenant application. Um, it seems to imply that it's still per not the owner of the application, uh, but the user's tenant. Is that the way the threshold is applied? So the threshold uh, for directory objects, uh, so if you look on the throttling documentation, is uh, is an app and tenant pair. So let's go so application plus tenant pair. And these are the limits. Ah, okay. So it is. Uh, so the same application, if it's a uh, by a different tenant, uh, in yes. other words, user of the application, mm -hmm. it would not affect other users from other, uh, let's say, businesses. Um, well, the, the application is like application ID. So if an application is used by multiple users, is always the application ID that that counts towards the the trash. The, the so. If uh, the same application ID is used by tenant A, but also used by tenant B, because mm -hmm. remember this is a multi-tenant app. Yeah, yeah. Are saying... Tenant B, yeah, there there are different limits because. Okay. Yeah. Tenant... Thank you for clarifying. Yes. Thanks. Any other questions? If not. I'm always available by email, and again, uh, the survey link is the, the main uh, way that we we use to, to get feedback on these items. Okay, thanks so much, everyone. Just as a reminder, the next community call is going to be June 16th at 9 a.m. Pacific time. And you can update your call calendars at aka.ms whack ID dev community calendar. And this call will be available on the YouTube channel later. Thanks a lot. Bye, everyone.